hello, 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 hello. We're just recording some B-roll, having a little fun with OD and D. I won't go into much stuff, and I'll just uh, have a little play around, see if stuff works. So, <clears throat> right. Top bananas. I need hex scroll rules. <laughs> there they are. <coughs> so, first off, obsidian. Here we go. I should probably write, write out these rules, but here we are. Um, travel. First off, roll the d6. Um, Oh, look. See a uh, Mecha Masumi down there. Um, I think this can probably come down. Mm. Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe not. Well, move that. Come a little like that. Mm. Yeah, that's an option. Okay, let's roll a d6 to see how we travel. Oh, wait a minute, so I've got some... I've got these guys. Where are they? Here we are. <clears throat> and we've not decided on what their previous careers were. So we got... Um, We've got Brandy um, Buckwine, who is a halfling thief, a hobbit thief. Um, Afferfred, uh, I think. Something like that. Afferfred, who is a human fighter. We have um, Gold Chop Siege Hammer, who is a dwarf fighter. We've got Carla the Smith, who is a cleric human. And um, the Lauren, Lala, Lauren, um, who's a magic user elf. We are using for our adventures at this moment. Um, <clears throat> white box. Do, 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 do. Which, because the bindings that I got for the book are rubbish, I bought a binder. Hmm. I'll talk about that later. Anyway, <clears throat> this uses split racing class. So, that's the thing. Oh, that tea bag. I can probably remove that tea bag from here. Anyway, um, lots of things that I should be doing. I should be, uh, I should be doing my NaNoWriMo, but I don't really have any idea of what I want to do at the moment, so that's not going anywhere. And I could play WRC, but I've already played lots of it. So, backgrounds. Um, I got a good option for. Oh, I know. There's, there's a a half decent list of. Oh, I should go over bin. Um, a half decent list of backgrounds in the um the player tomb. Hmm. Secondary occupations, right? Let's bring this back here. Where's it gone? Uh, page 23. Yeah, page. Oh, where that post it note is. It's D100. Do, 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 do. That'll do. Uh, no, I need to. Oh. Uh, so, 85, mm, tailor, not the most useful of occupations, so, uh, the Laren background occupation is a tailor, uh, BG, tailor, um, Carla the Smith's previous occupation, I mean, the name, I think, gives it away, but let's see what the dice say. 66, a Lorimer. No. 
um, will be armor or blacksmith. It should be a blacksmith. Um, they have a cleric human. Uh, background blacksmith. Smith. Okay. Um, Siege Hammer, what did you used to be? 40. Farmer. Uh, BG Farmer. Okay. Apple Fred. 66. A Lorimer. I don't know what a Lorimer is. I've looked it up before. I don't think it was very exciting. 53. Uh, a furrier. It's another one of those jobs where no idea what a furrier does. What does a furrier do? A person who, uh, unsurprising, a person who deals and prepares furs. Fair enough. Um, background a furrier. And last but not least, um, Buck Wine. Number three. What's a free? A free is. Doo -doo 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 -doo, animal trainer. Background. Animal trainer. So now we have got a. So this is, yeah, this is just temporary, so. Uh, it's all a mess. Everything's going to be a mess. Don't worry about it. Uh, we have a fighter. Uh, Afrofred is a furrier fighter. Um, Gold Chops is a uh, farmer, dwarf, fighter dwarf. Um, Carl of a smith is a blacksmith. And Lulloran, Snow Petal, the, the elf, was a tailor. First of their jobs. Happy days. <clears throat> so, I've got something printed out over here. <clears throat> Using our old Don John, we've got ourselves a brief outline for the world. There's one thing in here that we're probably not going to bear in mind, which is the world ends in 33 days, which in a... <sighs> A big old hex scroll might not be might not be the most useful thing, particularly in a, like an O D and D setting. Um, maybe. Um, what have we got going on? The name of the starting city is Tiffield. Um, the local inn is the Crossed Hammers. Um, in here we can meet Ilix, the female human. A heretical priest. Um, some other interesting information. Uh, nearby village of Hefrop and Hehill. Um, nearby hills. The haunted downs and a strewn. <laughs> the haunted downs are strewn with wyvern nests. We shall, we shall mm, avoid that. I feel. Um, let me bring the camera over here a bit so it can catch my mouth a bit more, maybe, possibly. Um, yeah, so uh, elves, mysterious wanderers, dwarves tend to be reclusive sages and scholars, halflings are crafty warriors, and humans are charlatans and liars. Sounds about right. Um, tallies of my expectations. Um, the God of Knowledge is um, Zariel, the Lady of Omens. Uh, the God of Life is uh, Peniar, um, Keeper of Names. Sounds more like a death title, but I suppose I get it. I like it. Um, God of Nature, uh, Irindil, the She-Queen. That makes sense. Um, King of Storms, Bormerf, 
Burr, Bornafin, Bornafin, uh, the old king, Trickster God, um, Gagadar, uh, Gagadar the Rogue, um, and who is the God of War? Mika, Keeper of Dragons. Fair enough. <clears throat> and we have Joyce for Witty, who's the expert on local local arcana. Um, Suze the Ardent, a female halfling, a, a religious expert. Who knows the area's history? Essen, the female elf. Who knows the most about the local geography? Erin, the enlightened, the female elf. Now, elves are going to be hard to find because, you know, they're wandering about. Um... But, cool. So that's kind of like a background for the world. It's kind of interesting. We'll see if we f get to flesh anything out. Um, this is a hex crawl. We'll imagine that we came onto the map via a road uh, that goes down here. And then once we're here, does it go right, left, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? <sighs> So that carries on going straight. Uh, same again. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One. Okay. And does it same again? Six. Okay. And then it heads off. Uh, so that's that's for road. So we can imagine that this starts in a plane, and oh, I bought myself some pencils. We're going to colour the plane um, this colour, I think. Is that? I don't know. I'm kind of sad that these numbers, that these don't have um, the colour name on them because I'm colorblind, and so, um, I think that's green. <clears throat> we're going to imagine that this is, uh, we're going to go with green. Well, we're going to imagine it is green. <clears throat> and what was the name of the town? The town was called, um, Tiffield. Tiffled. Now, I was going to go when we come across a new hex where the um, terrain isn't determined, we roll up the terrain as per the instructions. Um, and then, doo, this is fallen out of position, hasn't it? It should be here. And this should be here. Uh, and we're going to go to this location, right? So we've got a wee mission here, 433. I mean, 433, yeah. A group of bandits are raiding farms and villages in the area. Uh, the marshal will reward their, their expulsion with a land permit, right? So there's a adventure board at the end. Um, with a number of a number of adventures and illegible scroll. Um, some of them are rolled up from the uh, the tomb of a tome of adventure. Some of them I just knocked out myself, and some of them I think come from the dungeon site. <clears throat> so our objective is to get here. So free, free, dun dun. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, first things first, we need to roll to see if we can get to where we're trying to go. So, six, I think six is, yeah. Did I get a six last time? Yeah, move a whole movement as we please. So, first off, we go here. 
and we roll for the um, land type. If I can get out of my way now. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out the best place to put the cat, put everything again. Um, so if the starting hex is plain, which it is, the next hex is roll a d12. <clears throat> 11. So planes. Um, if current hex is planes for next planes with an 11. Oh, this is a surprise. It's swamp. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll use that for a swamp. Uh, and what kind of vegetation is it? So we'll say it was grassland originally. Um, seven grassland is more. So yeah, okay. Um, so it's more kind of grasslandy swamps. It's like a marsh. Um, <clears throat> now what I was going to do is go. Each time I encounter a terrain, I'll roll a d12 and that many hexes adjacent I will make into that terrain type. Okay, three. So, one, two. Uh, <clears throat> next roll. So, next roll should be, is there a water source? Um, hmm. Well, if we go none and roll a d12, because I mean, it kind of is, because it's a swamp, but. So, from a none to a six, there's still no water source in this hex that we know of. Um, do, do, do. With the general terrain now established in the new hex, roll a d8. One indicates a point of interest. Um, okay, D8, six, no. So the next one, is there water? Two. A two is, there's a river here somewhere. So let's just put um, a dot with an R there. So there's a river here. Which direction does the river go? So the river can go in any direction except for this direction. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> and we re-roll two. So five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, from here. So there's a river. Now I suppose a colour that I think might be blue. That doesn't look like it's blue. Is this blue? Oh, it'll be. It's blue enough for me. Right. Like so. <clears throat> so, this roll. Um, roll for. Alright, so we rolled for that. For here. And we need to roll for random thingy. Seven, so nothing. Also, we need to roll a d6 for uh, monsters this day. One. Okay, so there is a monster encounter at some point. Um, <clears throat> we should probably say that a swamp takes two, right? So, one, two, three, four. And that's the total of our movement for day. <clears throat> So they need to consume one of their uh, rations and we need to roll for whatever this encounter might be. So exciting. Ooh, ooh. Unexpected, unexpected encounters um, far earlier on than, than expected. Um, 
let's I haven't wasn't ready for an hour for a wilderness encounter they're so rare um, so given that we're we're talking about uh, monsters let's uh, let's see have we got a random monster table in here just off the uh, off the cuff uh, uh, treasure tougher monsters I expect that they might be in the in the front half of this book yeah <sighs> in here somewhere let's have a quick check yeah yep this is it. This is where they are. So, don't worry about that table. Wilderness movement rates. Okay, not what we're looking for. Um, oh, the hexes are six miles hexes. I'm sure we had this conversation before. Oh, no, that was for the, the other game. Um... Air movement, water movement, do 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 do. Oh, they also have a mule with them. So, uh, wilderness encounter, swamp. So it's a d10. Four. Four on a d10 is animal. Mm. So animal. Let's roll a d6. Um, centipedes. Okay. So our problem is centipedes. I presume this is alphabetical. Centipedes. Giant. I presume they're giant. Centipede giant small. Centipede giant medium. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, giant lethal centipedes of small size inflict a lethal amount of poison with each bite, but inflict no damage. Um, uh, and a lethal, though relatively weak poison. Um, okay, let's... Okay, one to three. How many does this number appearing? Does this do number appearing? It doesn't do number appearing. Mm. Okay. Well, <clears throat> moves, sizes, beasties. Let's roll a dice. One to two, three to four, five to six. Four. So medium size. Now I reckon you're going to get D3 worth of medium sized giants. So two medium sized giant centipedes. Have I got anything vaguely? Uh, no, probably not. Right, let me roll a D6 for both parties to see if they are surprised. So that's for centipedes. That's for party. Um, so that means that they, they both become aware of each other reasonably promptly. I think distance-wise, uh, 60 foot. 80 foot. Well, I, I think outside distance is measured in yards, so 80 yards away. Mwah. Because um, it isn't a surprise. Um, I think the party will will um, have a Barney with them. Seems like something to do. 
So, um, have I got, have we got a, um, have we got a, is it up in there? No. Have we got a, nothing in here? How do I put them somewhere? Um, well, I've definitely put them somewhere. Everything's got to go somewhere, don't we? Um... No, no, not any of you. Not you. I'm looking for maps. That's what I'm looking for. I've not made any outdoor maps. I was hoping that I'd quickly see... Uh, oh, there we are. Use tactical maps. <coughs> we don't need a very big one, but we do need one that's kind of outside. Be nice. <laughs> it's an inn. Does it have a reverse side that's just. I'll turn on the reverse side. Okay. That looks like it could be something. Take you off of there. Get you out of my way. I'm going to have to come up with a, a more space efficient approach to all this, aren't I? Yes, I am. <laughs> Too many loose bits and pieces everywhere. <clears throat> to be frank. I probably don't need to bother with the map when you really think about it. We've got... We've got five brave adventurers. Right. Um, a wizard, dwarf fighter, a human cleric, a human fighter, um, uh, and we need... Well, you two can represent, um, you two can represent giant, giant monsters. Right. <clears throat> first things first, roll for initiative. Don't lose for a little pot. Um, monsters go first. So, uh, and they're two hit dice, right? So this monster is going to rush up here and attack the halfling. Um, and the halfling, because I'm playing around with stuff, armor stuff. The halfling's wearing leather and she is dexterous. So she has an armor class of two. She also has a shield. So, two hit dice monster versus armor class of two. Uh, two hit dice monster, armor class of two, so to hit it needs a 15. Okay, let's roll. Doesn't hit. Okay, this next one is going to rush over here and attack this fighter. Now this fighter, because they are wearing play armor, they're easy to hit. Right, so um, fighter has an armor class of seven, but well, has a to hit target of seven. Because they're wearing plate, um, so a seven monster needs a two, uh, needs a ten. So it attacks, it only gets a seven, so it doesn't hit. Um, these beasties, they're quite fast, uh, so I'm going to say their armor class is four. So everyone in the party is looking for a 14 to hit an armor class 4. Um, <clears throat> so wizard isn't really doing anything. Um, really just kind of like, the wizard's going to come over here and kind of ensure they have some a, a good bit of vision. Uh, 
the fighter, this fighter, the dwarf fighter, old gold, uh, old gold, gold chops is going to go, grrr, the fin, hideous insectoid monsters, and rushes over into the combat, right. Uh, they rush in to that combat, and the cleric rushes in to this combat. Um, so the melee, there's no ranged going on, so it's all going to be melee. These are fives, I said, right? Oh no, I said four. So we're looking for 14s to hit. So this fighter. Uh, this fighter has a strength of 15, so actually they're looking for nines to hit. Right, I think. Are they both? Did we get both of them into the right strength category? We did. Athel, Refred, and Gold Chops both need. Um, to hit armor class 4, 14s. To hit armor class 4, 14s. Hold on. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh. Oh, okay. So we attacked with like a less than one hit dice monster. It's interesting, eh? Um, Athelfred misses. Misses. Uh, I think, gold, yeah, gold chop misses. Um, Cleric is looking for 15s to hit. No. Halfling, 15s to hit. Halfling hits. <clears throat> so the halfling has a short sword, if memory serves me correctly. Don't you, Brandy? Brandy, you have a... Yeah, you've got a... Uh, oh, no, you've got a full-on longsword. So you are... Yeah, so you're flat to hit. You don't have a benefit for strength. So we say we have leather armor, so we need a free or higher to penetrate the centipede's armor. And we didn't get it. So we don't do any damage to a centipede. Um, <clears throat> next round. Centipedes go first. So this centipede is going to attack her again. So it's looking for, against an armor class of two, it's looking for 15s, which it gets. So to get through her armor, it needs to get a three or more. Which it fails to get. This one is going to attack um, Gold Chops. And it needs a... It needs a 10 to hit. So it doesn't hit. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay, the two fighters are going to attack this one. He hits. Uh, so needs a three, uh, needs a two or more to do damage. Um, so two or more to do damage gets a two. So it gets through the no, yes. So it gets through the armor, and then um, standards are four to do damage, and it's got two hit dice. So. It needs to roll. This is where I think I've got a problem with this. Mm. So it rolls to two two hit dice um, to a target of five because default is four. He's got a plus one to the damage. Monsters don't have a constitution bonus. Um, so it needs to roll 5 on 2d6. It gets a 5. So it's not dead. Um, <clears throat> interesting. We'll have to think about that. Uh, Gold Chops is going to try here. Gold Chops hits it. Needs a 2 or more to get through the armor. Gets through the armor. It needs to roll a 5 on one of these dice. It doesn't roll a 5. Um, so it loses one hit dice. So this is down to one hit dice. Um, these two are going to hit that. Oh, my tea's gone cold.
I've drunk it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this recording, but just keeping it around for posterity for the time being. So, they've managed to do one point down, one hit dice worth of damage. This guy is going to attack the halfling again. And it hits. So it needs a three or more to get through the armor. It does. And it does poison damage. So she needs to make a saving throw. Um, she doesn't get any particular bonuses to her saving throw. So she needs to roll a 14 or greater. Or she dies. She rolls a 19. She isn't poisoned. Hooray! Um, that one attacks and misses. No, 10. 10 hits. So it hits gold shops. Needs a 5 or a 6. It gets a 1. Okay. <clears throat> See, I'm pretty sure that I just accidentally went on to the next round there. So, with that, I'm going to carry on a bit more roll for the next attack. So, uh, she misses. Clack. She misses. Um, gold chops. He misses. Apple thread. He hits. Apple thread. Hits. Uh, three or above, two or above to get through the armor. Hits, gets through the armor. Now, the monster needs to get a five or above on this dice. Doesn't get it. Monster's dead. Okay, cool. <clears throat> now, I was t did I build a table for this? I didn't. I was thinking about a morale table for monsters. Because if it doesn't have a morale table, though. So I was going to say... Um, D6. If you get a 1, they run. 2 through 5, they're hardened. Um, no, 2 through 5, they stay. 6, they're hardened. Um, but at half strength, they get a minus 1. And if they're the last one left, they get a minus 2. Um, so for this, we'll say we're at minus 2. Because... They rolled a five anyway, so for it gets it's a monster, it's gonna keep on nibbling, right? So who goes first? Uh, the pie does. So she's gonna get out of the melee, right? And shoot. So for her to hit a five with her bow, she needs uh, to hit a four with her bow. She needs a twelve. Which she doesn't get. Oh, but she can shoot twice because that's a finger miss. But she misses both times. So next they move in. Um, Apple thread misses. Gold chops misses. Misses. Giant centipede is gonna try and eat the cleric 13 that's a hit but she gets a 50 50 chance to block it i should have given them 50 50 chances to block as well but i forgot 50 50 percent chance to block it so four plus they block four blocked okay cool um next round five one party goes first she's going to shoot it's short range as well so it's plus one so she actually needs a um An 11 to hit. She hits. Yes. Go on. Do it. So she needs a... Um, three or above to do wound. She does. Uh, and then it needs a four plus. Right. On one of these dice. It gets its four plus. Um... <clears throat> Need to think about that. Okay, cool. So it gets a four plus. 
and she gets to shoot again. Did I roll twice? I didn't. I only rolled once. That's a miss. Okay. Him. Miss. Him. Miss. Her. Hit. So, again, she needs a three. That's a four, so that's through. And it needs to get a four or more. So, it did. Um... <clears throat> It attacks gold for Goldie Boy. It hits. He blocks. He does block. Next round. Evens of the Stevens. The roll again. Monster goes first. Okay. Monster attacks gold chops. It hits. Gold chops blocks. Doesn't block. It needs a 5 or a 6 to get through his armour. It doesn't get through his armour. Okay. Um, there you go. Uh, Athelfred. Uh, no. Sh um, Brandy shoots. Misses. And she shoots. And she misses. Melee. 20. That's a hit. It gets through the armour. So it needs to get a 3 or more. No, it needs to get five or more on both of the dice. Gets five on one. Okay. Uh, gold chops missed, right? Cleric. Cleric hits. Cleric gets through the armor. It needs to get a four or more. It gets a six. Need to think about this. <laughs> um. <clears throat> need to think about that. Because it's only going to get more difficult to kill something with more hit dice. At least with an attack that only does one one damage. So, yeah, that doesn't work quite as well. Because I'd only been thinking about one hit dice monsters. So for one hit dice monsters, it's fine. But for two hit dice monsters, it's a bit more difficult. Hmm. Works well for players. Need to think about it. Need to think about it. Right, uh, next round. One, four. All right, so the party gets to hit first. Shoots, hits. Um, through the armor. No. Shoots, misses. Hits. Mm, doesn't hit. Hits. Doesn't hit. Hits, doesn't hit. It hits the dwarf. It misses. Okay, next turn. Monster goes first. It hits the dwarf. It misses. Okay, Apple French. Dead brandy. She shoots. She hits once. Okay, does she get through the armor? She does. Does it resist? It does. Okay, um, again, him, miss, next, miss, next, miss. <clears throat> Four, six, monster goes first. It hits for dwarf, it misses, it hits, dwarf blocks, dwarf does block. Okay, uh, she shoots a bit, hits, let's just see if she hits twice. She hits twice. Maybe I should do that, and if she hits twice, then she rolls, then she rolls down. Or maybe all the damage should be applied at once. Let's try, no, because we need to work it out because we're different damage dice, right? So she hits twice, um, one of them gets through the armor. Uh, so it rolls for its defense, it manages to not get, get killed. Uh, he hits. Uh, he doesn't get through the armor. Gold chops. Gold chops misses. Cleric misses. Next round. Party goes first. Hey. She shoots. She misses. She shoots. She misses. He attacks. 
He wound. He hits. Um, he gets for the armor. He needs fives. He got a five. <laughs> Yeah, this process doesn't work. Maybe it should only forget to roll one. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Then. Yeah. I don't know the best way to deal with this. It's one of the problems of weapons. Is they all just do 1d6 plus or minus something. So... <clears throat> the more hit dice you get, the more kind of impossible it becomes to cause damage. Hmm... Hmm... <clears throat> Hmm. Gonna have to think about that. Maybe no. See, that doesn't work either, right? Uh. <clears throat> I suppose yeah. It's like where with the um. Anyway, uh, I think that was that round. So the party goes first. She's going to shoot it. Hits. Shoot it again. Misses the second time. She gets through the armor. She doesn't kill it. So she doesn't injure it. <clears throat> right. He's going to attack it. He misses. He misses. She hits. She doesn't get through the armor. I don't think she does anyway. What, what weapon she got? Mm, thief, cleric, cleric. What you got? Oh, just for hand axe. No, mm, that's gold chops. What have you got? Oh, the Morning Star. I still think it's only 1d6. Uh, it misses. She hits. She hits twice. They both get through the armor. So now I'm going to say that it needs to roll. Yeah. Okay, so it's got two wounds coming through on it. It fails to get both of them. It's dead. Okay. I don't know if I just got really, really unlucky there. Because really, 50-50%. So it's really like 50% of the time with 2d6. No, it's more like 75% of the time, 2d6, where you get one number greater than... Um, one number greater than 4, right? Because with 1d6, it's 50% of the time. With 2, it's got to be higher than that. <clears throat> Especially if you only need one dice, right? So it must be like 75% of the time you're going to get. Because <sighs> then it doesn't make it. Because if you turn around and go, okay, well, I mean, maybe if both die, if you don't get both, then you lose one. But then what's the point in rolling more than one dice, right? Um. So, 
That doesn't quite work the way we imagined that it would work. We need to think about that. Well, it doesn't work the way we imagined it would work because web damage doesn't stack. And maybe if we... If we add the dice worth of damage to it and then roll all the damage at the end... And you can think about, right, so, okay, right, well, I've got three dice against it. It's only got two dice of hit points. That's more likely to hit. Um, but then the problem that you have is... Uh, different dice... Some dice get plus one, and some dice get minus one, and some dice don't get modified. Um, so, it was useful having a fight with two hit dice monsters, because I wouldn't have thought about that otherwise. So we're going to have to have a little think on how that works. And I'm going to go play some WRC. So, thank you very much. I'll probably upload this pretty much as is, now that I think about it. Um, but cool. Interesting. Very interesting. Not what I was expecting. Because I hadn't thought about it. And this is one of the reasons why we play test new rules. Because sometimes we think of a rule that seems like it will solve some problems, but actually it doesn't solve any of the problems that you thought it would. Um, this is one of those situations. So we're going to have a think. And I'll put you back in an hour or so after I've played some WRC. So, ciao. Recording.